Sean Wylock here. Forge World is an in-house custom division of Games Workshop. They make resin casts, generally. A while back they offered modular roads that are discontinued but highly sought even to this day. They're out of print now, uh, but I wanted a set of roads and 50% of what I do on this channel is just reverse engineering pictures that I see anyway. So that's exactly what I did. Now I actually built a whole set of these and didn't really like the result, so I started over completely but I filmed both. So I'm gonna go through both methods. You can pick and choose what you like. Oh, and one big mechanical thing. Uh, they slide around on the table a lot, so I tried to solve that, and I think you'll find the solution kind of interesting. So very excited about this one, and let's get to it. The base of these will be chipboard. This is graphics medium chipboard. Highly recommend because it's very thick, sturdy, easy to cut with a utility or crafting knife, and cheap. Link in the description below if you want to buy some through me as an affiliate. No extra cost to you, I just get a small kickback. Free way to support the channel if you like. Anyway, we're going to start by making a straight road segment. So cut this 12 by 12 inch sheet in half. Now you have two rectangles, 6 by 12 inches. Then some 12 inch square cork sheeting. This is available at any crafting store. It's about 4 millimeters thick or something like that. Cut off 4 inches, so you have a rectangle that's 4 by 12 inches. Apply some white PVA glue, like Elmer's, spread it out evenly, and then glue the cork to the chipboard, making sure that it's centered. Now some thin strips of chipboard, cut them out just a few millimeters wide, and hot glue them to the sides like this to create a gutter. Then pump on a thick bead of hot glue all along the outside to form a small slope, which will also help greatly to reinforce that strip. If you want to, cut away slivers of the edges with scissors to give a more natural look. Probably should have done that before the hot glue. Then take some cereal box or model box like this here and uh, cut randomly sized strips and hot glue them into the gutter. Mix it up a bit for a little variety. Then cover that outer slope with white glue, spread it with a junk brush to make sure good coverage, and flock with sand. This is Quick Creek Construction Sand, has varying sized aggregate. A 50 pound bag was four bucks and is a lifetime supply. Now before we get into painting, let's take a quick look at how to make those segments that have been shelled, so they have craters. On the chipboard base, measure that six inches somewhere inwards like you see here, and then draw big circles, freehand or with a compass, whatever, so that they hang over the edge. Play around until you get sizes that you like. Then overdraw those onto the cork rectangle and cut out the overlapping section as you see here. Then cut out the chipboard. I uh, did the crater freehand because a ragged edge is good. And from there apply those gutter rails just as before except obviously not going into the crater. And build that slope of hot glue. Then do the gutter inserts. Next part's optional, but it will add some nice randomness and broken ground to those craters. I'm going to use drywall mud and spread it out in the crater and taper it into a slope going up to the perimeter to help give it that crater feel. And the next day with that dry, apply white glue to the edges and to all the craters and flock it all with sand. A few hours later that should be dry. Take your cork sheeting and break random chunks apart and hot glue them in place to kind of show the chunks of road that got heaved away in the explosion. Here you can see another one with a lot more smaller craters. I'm going to take a rich brown and paint those edge slopes, and then plain old gray to base coat everything else. Then some plain white, and dry brush all that sand in the craters. If you're new to all this, dry brushing just means dip the brush in the paint, but then work most of the paint right back off onto the palette so the brush is very lightly loaded. And then strike at the texture erratically to catch only the high details. Not going for realism here, this is not professional level stuff, just quick and dirty, fun terrain crafting. Then take a tan or a cream sort of color and dry brush those slopes. And finally wash the entire piece in black. Take some cheap acrylic craft paint and mix it down. The ratio is going to vary with brand, but a good place to start is something like 10 parts water to 1 part paint. Mix it well, and know that it's going to dry lighter than it looks when it's wet, so don't panic. You can see the consistency I'm going for here. 
And if it goes on too dark, don't panic. Just dip your brush in water and slather it on there. Mix it up directly on the piece and start spreading it out. But for now, I'll say when they were finished, I wasn't totally happy with them. That cork sheet is expensive, which is counter to the spirit of the channel. And also they move around on the table a lot. So I figured I'd try to integrate the cardboard lot concept from episode 95 into them. So I sold this first batch to my friend and began building anew. Here's what I did the second time around. Now the key is we're going to attach another layer of chipboard to the base. We're going to need to attach strips along the sides and then another in the middle. It, this is easier with an illustration. Okay, so for the basic straight section you got your usual 6 by 12 inch base. Then with white PVA glue we're going to attach a 1 and a quarter inch wide strip to each side. And then a 1 inch wide strip right in the center. And so obviously that leaves you with these two gap channels which are one and a quarter inch wide each. The last thing to do is glue in four more chunks of chipboard in those channels as illustrated here so that we've created four empty square cavities. Later on this is where the clips will be inserted. Note that it really doesn't matter what else you glue in this area so feel free to use chipboard scraps or whatever. Honestly the more you throw in there the better support you'll have for the foam board that we're about to attach. On that note, let's do that. So instead of cork sheet, we're using foam board with the paper peeled off of at least one of the sides. In the US, we have access to ready board, which can be found at the Dollar Tree. And it's awesome because the cheap stuff and the paper peels off real easy. But if you don't have that exact brand, try using rubbing alcohol or soaking the foam board in the bathtub for a while and the paper will peel off easily. Anyway, after you get the paper off, take some aluminum foil, ball it up and roll it around to texturize the exposed foam. Then cut a 4x12 inch piece just like we did for the cork earlier and glue it on, centered. Apply glue to all the surface you can on that second layer. Notice that the foam will only be touching a quarter inch strip of those two sides. This is intentional and actually very important. And you can use that fact to help you ensure that it's centered as you're gluing it on just by eyeballing it, no measurement needed. Here I am attaching a three-way intersection. Um, by the way, here's how I did three-way intersections. And here's how I did 90 degree turns. And here I figured I'd just show this is attaching the foam piece for the many small crater piece. Notice I just maximized the amount of material in the second layer so that I have a lot for the foam to grip to, especially this one because it's kind of fragile. And why not? Here I am attaching a 90 degree turn. Notice the amount of glue I'm using. Not too much, not too little. If you use just the right amount and spread it out, the bond is going to be almost instant with chipboard. The material just drinks it up and within about 60 seconds it's like totally dry, very strong bond. That is not usually the case when you work with white glue and it's just another reason that I'm always espousing on how much I love chipboard. Oh, and here's an alternative to drywall mud. You can tease hot glue outward from the center of a crater to get that depth and that crater detail. Much faster, easier, quality of the results are arguable. Your mileage may vary. For the painting, same deal, except I didn't bother with that brown on the edges. Just solid gray for the whole thing, dry brush with white, and wash with a very thinned out black. Now once they're totally dry and done, you may notice they have a bit of an upward curve, warped, due to that glue and paint. And here's how to fix that. Flip it over, apply a layer of white glue, spread it out nice and even. You can just use your finger, it won't hurt you. And then leave it like this. And now look, this is the exact same piece, no doctoring. Uh, once that glue fully cured, like 24 hours, it totally grabbed and it counteracts the warp that we had before. This is basically as close as you're going to get to something being like factory flat. As for the clips themselves, it's just more chipboard. Rectangles. Two inches long, one and an eighth of an inch wide. I also recommend you clip the corners so it's easier to insert them. And we're about to go to the table to look at the finished product, but real quick, some reminders. There's a link in the description below for my storefront. It has all the tools and supplies that I recommend. And for all you 3D printers out there, Wilox Crafting Vids is sponsored by Heroes Horde, which has an excellent range of high quality models, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines, which are open lot compatible. Also, check out my modules over on the DMs Guild, and remember, $3 patrons get free copies of all my releases. 
Here's a close-up of the finished product. At the end, these are the two empty slots. That's where the clips go in that, that hold the pieces together. And we'll go on down here. So I, I did make a short six inch segment. Those are handy to have for handling offsets. Here's all my clips. I just keep them in a little Tupperware, easy enough. So uh, move this tank out of the way and then uh, show you here. You can pull it apart and see that there's two clips. Uh, you know, it doesn't move. I can flick on it. It doesn't move because they're all tied together. And uh, this is how it's done. So very effective. Durability hasn't been an issue. They don't fray or anything. I'm doing this with one hand here. It's actually much easier with, <laughs> with two hands. But there you go. And we'll walk on down the street. And I figured, you know, roads would be kind of boring. So I'd throw some models in here. These are my ultramarines I'm working on. Uh, might as well. I owed you guys that much. And these buildings, again, these are the Gothic buildings from episode 77, in case you're interested. Um, here's a dreadnought equipped with a some kind of bits that I stole from a land raider that were left over. So we'll walk on down the street here. Uh, I treat the crater pieces, if you're standing on that, as a as cover terrain. Uh, I don't remember. Let's see. There's like eight or nine straightaways, two of the craters, two three-way intersections couple corners so whatever you feel like is good enough for your complete set that's what you should make that concrete gravelly dust uh, came out real nice just gray and then a white dry brush and a black wash I keep it real simple if you liked this particular project here's two more that you should go check out right now also enjoy this month's community showcase and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell reminder icon I am Wylock thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time